can go beyond him. I just read everything he wrote, you know, and I write, a, I read a lot of the uh, the black poets, you know, the old black poets from way back, like Sterling Williams, you know, Richard Wright, you know, a lot of those folks, you know, James Baldwin, a lot of old black writers, they, you know, they, they can get me in a book and I, w I want to leave, I'm ready. You know, that's my inspiration from them. I used to be in a band when I was in high school, all from the eighth grade all the way up to till I graduated from high school, I was in a band. You know, I either wanted to sing, but I couldn't sing. You know, my music teacher says, gee, I couldn't sing. I, but I was in a band, but I played the bass drum. So when they formed the rock and roll band, you know, there was no need for a bass drum, just a bass drum player. And I, you know, I was, I could play the snare, but I wasn't as good as the real snare, my friend Red Boy, which he was really good. And I always wanted to be on that stage. So I, I love music. And like I say, I couldn't sing. And I always thought about getting me a band, a bass drum, and just start me a brass band. <laughs> but there was no brass band in Vashery. So I had to stick with the storytelling and uh, the performance stuff. I know, I was in a play once, and this lady, uh, the director say, she heard me sing, she said, you have to mount the part. And she went to Europe, and this other director took over, music director took over, and he said, well, Ain't no such thing as tone deaf. He said, everybody can sing when he said that. I said, hell, are we ever sing? I started singing. She came back from Europe, Europe this uh, band director, and looked at me and said, wow, we were watching a video of the show. And she said, wow, you the best mouth I know. I said, mouth my ass. I was singing. <laughs> well, I do sing, you know, I sing. I, I, well, I don't class myself as a singer. You know, that's something I... I see a lot of poets get on the stage and embarrass themselves singing. <laughs> you know, like, please don't sing. You know, some people are not supposed to sing. Really. <laughs> yeah, growth better happen soon. Like I get this book out, <laughs> but I haven't been writing for you, uh, like you know a few months now. I've you known this bit in here and there. But when in writing, as soon as I sit down and start doing, it's gonna come. But just to sit there and do it, to make up my mind, to sit there and write is one of the hardest things I can do. You know, especially if I don't know, me if I get all the way broke, then I, I go. But uh, poets don't need no money because you get lazy, and that's that's been my problem. I've been lazy, but I know it's when I do start writing that my writing do come back. So. Well, I got some too painful, but I, I hate to do it myself, you know. I, I do it for therapy sometimes. Uh, I don't really go too deep, not too dark. Well, <laughs> well they take, they've taken me all over the United States, you know. I've, been just about everywhere, Chicago, New York, to all the Texas, you know, Vancouver. You know, it wasn't for these poems. A lot of places I would never be heard. And it gave me, uh, gave me an outlet to express some of the feelings I have. And they really do me good inside. I feel good after a performance. But I feel even better when I write a piece. I get a better feeling than even getting on stage performing that piece. So I get great gratitude of just coming up with a piece, you know, just because, you know, as a poet, you'll know, you never know if you got another poem in you. Do you have another poem? Another winner, at least, if anybody can write a poem. Do I have another winner in me? And when I do get a piece, I feel so grateful, so good about it. You know, it's one of the greatest high I know. Poetry Slam been wonderful to me. You know, without Poetry Slam, I would have never written as much stuff as I have. Because like I say, you'd always need a winner. And all of the, to win slams, you know, 
a lot of people talk about poetry slam is not poetry. But you don't, if you don't have no good poetry, you don't win a slam. And good poems win slams. And poetry slams kept me writing for a lot of years. Because I always wanted to be fresh. You, you keep you fresh on the fresh side. You always want that next winner, that next hit. So poetry slam been great to me. It, you know, it brought me all over. And I'm still okay with slam, to tell you the truth. I'm still okay with slam. It's changed in a way because you got different people coming in. You have different age group. You have different philosophies. But, you know, it's changed. But it's, in all this, all, it's about the poetry. And I would advise anybody to take a chance at slam. Because one thing it will do is keep you writing. It'll keep you fresh. Because I'm not in that generation. You see, I might be this age, you know, but I didn't start writing until 1995. So it's a lot of poets that in slam, and they started writing around the same time that I did. You know, and they're writing, you're only writing for one audience. So the audience I'm right for is in that age bracket. I can't go to a venue, perform for people 25 to 35 years old and perform with an old mind. I got to have something for them. That's something that they're going to appreciate, something going to make them happy, make them, you know. So I don't see, I, I don't get that stuff about these, these uh, I, I think it's not the age, it's the over-educated people that don't think slam is what it's supposed to be, it's poetry. Uh, that's what I would class them in, the over-educated bunch of people, not the older people. Yeah, I see a difference. It's, it's harder to understand, <laughs> for one thing. It's harder to understand. And, and it's, uh, you know, the, the, the work is good, too, on the page. You know, because I want my stuff to stand on the page as well as on the stage. So I like, I love, you know, all kind of poetry, I think. But you got a different setting. Like, I would call it the New York Times type. I mean, uh, New Yorker type of poems, you know. That's a lot of times you read something in the New, New Yorker, and what the hell are they talking about? But that, those are the over-educated people. Sure. No, indeed, I wish. <laughs> my strategy. I don't know nothing about strategy. I love having a coach, man. I love having a coach when I'm on a slam team, you know. Perfect example with Charles Elick. He was a hell of a coach, you know. I won many championships with him, but he knew where to place me, the strategy. I don't really, I can't confess to knowing nothing about strategy at all. Uh, not really. Sometime I know I see a crowd, I know I can blow, blow away. But, you know, slam is just what it is. It's a poetry slam. Uh, you know, it's by the judge and the audience. You know what the judges know. They're just a member of the audience. So if you lose a slam, you don't even look at it as, you know, a loss. Some people take it hard, but I could never take a slam hard because I know it's just a slam. But I felt like that at one time that I couldn't lose. After my first team make, time making national, uh, the next year I thought I was so hot I wasn't going to never lose. And I, that year, that 1999, I didn't even make a team. But everybody who beat me, at least they won the slam, San Francisco and Oakland. One in tie San Jose. I was trying out for all, all those teams and couldn't make it. But they won national, so I don't feel too bad that they beat me. But slam will humble you. It will humble you if you think you, you're that good. Just get out there and give it a try. You can feel the difference. <laughs> Yeah, it changed me a lot. It made me want to go to school. <coughs> yeah, I knew I, I wanted to do so. I wanted to write. You know, I wanted to talk. If you hear how I know you've been talking to my friend over there at Pickle, you hear his accent, how he talk. You know, when I went to California, I couldn't talk, but I wanted to be on radio. <laughs> it was the hardest job in the world for somebody talking to be on radio, you know what I mean, with the voice, my diction I had. Because, you know, my folks was Creole, so they only conversed in Creole. 
And when they talk, it was this, that, da, and it wasn't no, you know, <laughs> come here, you know, not come here. It wasn't no there, you know, dad. And, and I had that in me so bad, so it took a lot of college, a lot of reading, a lot of to get, you know, where I got to. And I did make it to radio. I did get a job in radio, so I did radio in San Francisco for like 17 years. You know, I made it on the air. But it took a lot of school, a lot of rehearsal, a lot of reading, a lot of loud. Well, I just influenced me a lot, you know. I could never see myself having lived my life after working on the plantations and living out here in Vashery. I, I would have been crazy. I, I just, the Bay Area just offered me so much more to do, so many more places to go, you know, stuff to do, things to see, different cultures. You know, I only had one, one way out here in Vashery. You know, all the time I've been there, it was in my mind since I was young, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to find my daddy, you know, and I did find him, it was too late, he had passed away, but I found out who he was and got to know my brother. So I did exactly, exactly what my grandmother used to, when I used to ask her about, you know, will I ever find my dad? And she, she said, God.